Welcome back. Now that we have dispensed with some of the... Welcome back. Now that we have learned from the introductory section of the book of Ezra, we're now going to get into lessons from this wonderful book. And in lesson one, it is about God steers people up for you. God steers people up for you. Let's look at the context of why I'm saying that. Now, if you look at chapter 1 in particular, the Bible says that for the word of Jeremiah to be fulfilled, or the word which God spoke through Jeremiah to be fulfilled, Cyrus made a declaration, a proclamation, and put it in writing. And he told the people of Judah, or the people of Israel, to go back and build the temple for God and Cyrus recognizing that it was God who actually put all the kingdoms under him remember that Isaiah also prophesied about Cyrus in Isaiah 45 so you can take a read on that that's very interesting because Cyrus is the only non-Jewish person or non-born again person that is said to be anointed by God now we we can get into all of what that means and how we unpack that, but not the lesson for today. But we understand that Jeremiah's word was fulfilled by Cyrus. And God did this by stirring up the heart of Cyrus and some of the people to go back and build that particular temple at the time. Doors were opened. When I said doors were opened, it actually meant that all the gold and the silver that Nebuchadnezzar took from Zedekiah, when the land of Judah and Benjamin finally collapsed, he took all that gold and, 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 and silver and took it back to Babylon and locked it up in a room. Cyrus opened those doors and gave those things back to Shezbazah, Zerubbabel, and Joshua, along with all the other people who returned to the land. And there marked the first wave of people returning to build the temple, to build the city, and later on to build the wall of the city. But you will have learned that when we looked at the introductory section. So now, how do we apply this to ourselves? Or how can you apply this to yourself when I say God steers our people for you? Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I remember this. This is what my pastor told me this story, and it's true. He told me this story years ago. When we're looking for a building in the UK, if you find a building, you need planning permission if you want to turn into a church. Okay, it was a building that really could be used for for worship, but it didn't have that permission on it. So you had to go to the council, and it was a long-winded process. You write the letters. You got to get the architects involved. You got to have the health and safety involved. It's a long and lengthy, lengthy process. Anyway, we went through all that and came to the point where we had the final meeting with the council leaders. And it was at that meeting that God was going to, or the council were going to actually make a decision uh, for us. So the council convened and my pastor was there. I think he went with his wife and they were there. And this guy, came in late they started the meeting maybe about 20 minutes before the guy came in the guy looked so unkept and he came in and just sat down and um, he was one of the council members to make the decision with and my pastor said to me that he looked at him that why is this guy coming in so late and what is he up to why is he looking so scruffy anyway and it turned out that the actual decision of whether we could use that building as a church rested on somebody saying give them a try and guess who it was it was the guy who came late that actually stood by our church and said listen guys we have nothing to lose give them a try if it doesn't work out we can revoke the license but just give them a try and he insisted that the other council members listened to him. And that's how we got the planning permission to start Harmony Christian Center 
um, at the time. So, listen, God stirred that guy up for us. And that's the same way that God is stirring people up for you. God's word concerning you will be fulfilled. And how is it going to be fulfilled? It's going to stir up people for you. It's going to cause people to think positively about you. It's going to cause people to think that they really want to help you. They don't even know why they want to help you, but they're going to be so persuaded by God to help you because God is able to turn the hearts of kings like a river. And therefore, the same way that doors were open for children of Israel and all the booties that they took from them was returned. Let me tell you something. I noticed in scripture from reading the book of Ezra, from listening to the book of Ezra, the Holy Spirit showed me something, which is the fact that whenever we leave an adverse situation or when we come out of what seems to be captivity, we never leave empty handed. Now, watch this. When the children of Israel left Egypt, remember, they spoiled the Egyptians by taking everything from them. They took all the gold, they took all their silver, you know, legally, they were favorably disposed to them, as how the Bible puts it. But they gave them everything. They left with everything. Remember that when uh, AI defeated the children of Israel for a time, when they killed the 36 people, when Joshua took the whole army back into AI, they left with a lot of booties. I'll give you another one. When Joseph left prison, he didn't leave prison with nothing. No, Joseph left prison with wisdom that enabled him to use his gift to become second in command to Pharaoh. What about David? When David left, when David left, uh, um, when David went to war against those, the Amalekites who had taken his family, remember this in the book of First, First Samuel, when he went, he came back with all the booties that the Amalekites had taken from all the surrounding nations. What about Paul? When Paul was locked up in prison in Acts 16 and he left, he left having got the jailer and his family born again. Listen, when, when you leave a place of adversity, you do not leave that place empty-handed. And look at the children of Israel who have been held in captivity for 70 years. Now they're leaving Persia or under the rulership of Cyrus to go back to, uh, or they're leaving Babylon to go back to Israel. Now guess what? They're also leaving with lots of booties that had been taken away from them. And you will achieve purpose because God will open doors for you so that you also will leave with so many things in your hands so much wisdom, so much clarity, so much purpose, so much power, so much grace in the name of Jesus. And you will achieve purpose because God will stir up people for you. Here's my question. Have you had any experience of what I'm talking about here, where you have left some place of adversity with booties and have you ever had any experience where you can say God stirred people up for your benefit? Let me know. Message me and I'll see you in the next lesson. See you soon.